getting the CIPLA numbers. So on the top line, it's a good number. It's a 9% revenue growth on a year-on-year -year basis. But the bottom line has missed our expectations. We were working with a profit figure of about uh, 773 crore, but the company has delivered a number which is closer to 526. But that's on account of a one-time loss. If you add that back, I think the bottom line would be closer to uh, you know 700 crore rupees, which is just slightly lower than what this you know CNBC TV18 poll was. So the big drop that we are seeing in the profitability versus estimates is on account of a one-time loss of 182 crore. If you add that back to the bottom line, then the profit would be closer to 708 crore, which is near the CNBC TV18 poll of 773 crore. Uh, the EBITDA, the margins have come in at 20.5%, uh, an improvement compared to 14.3% that we saw in the comparable quarter of last year, but slightly lower than street anticipating. So a bit of a miss coming through on the profitability and uh, on the margins. Uh, we have uh, Cinderella uh, joining, Cinderella Carvalho of JM Financial now joining in. Uh, afternoon, uh, initial reaction to CIPLA and what explains this uh, little bit of a margin miss? Yes, of course. So there is a margin miss for sure. So definitely we were at around 21% plus and we have delivered around 204 So below our estimates, but uh, top line has been ahead of our uh, expectations. So we want to look at the regional breakup to understand this. And overall, I think, uh, as you very well said, that there is an exceptional item of 182. So uh, that's what is uh, largely the pack miss. We were also around 7 billion number for our this Q4 number. Estimate. You, know, you know, Cinderella, as we speak, the stock actually has moved into the green. So I think uh, the street got stumped actually with that uh, big miss on the bottom line. And then they saw that one off and that's why it's recovered a goodish bit. Uh, Cinderella, uh, any kind of margin you were working with, you know, the margins that I've reported have come in at around 20 and a half percent, which is an improvement from 14.3 percent on a year on year basis. Uh, but it's Q4 is generally a weak quarter from a Q3 perspective, like, you know, there is always a, a blip uh, to the Q4 number. However, from my expectation perspective, we were at 21.4. So, uh, like, you know, it is a miss from our estimate as well. Yeah, a little off. But the top line has been better. We were at around a 54 billion number. They have delivered uh, ahead of 56. So that's uh, that's kind of, you know, help them. But then the pack is still lower because if the top line has been ahead of our numbers, then definitely the EBITDA margins are working in their uh, slightly lower than our estimates. Cinderella, can you just give us a sense of, uh, you know, how you were expecting uh, the individual businesses to shape up? And for, in for instance, in India, what were you penciling in? Um, and we'll just wait by to get some of those details as well. Uh, to get a breakup of what's worked on the top line, which is a number that uh, definitely enthuses you. So, of course, we we were expecting a good number from the U.S. perspective because of generic travel limit, and that continues throughout the numbers, right? So, U.S. and India, uh, definitely, this is a seasonally weak quarter for India business, actually, Q4. Uh, however, their IQVA numbers have been better. Uh, so we, we really wait to see that. And Saga, we were expecting a flattish to negative uh, kind of a growth for this quarter. Uh, and the rest of the business is uh, around about 5-6% uh, growth. So that was the overall number. I think the big expectation is U.S. around $175 million and uh, then followed by India. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Cinderella, hi. Thanks very much for joining. And just wanted to come in on the profit bid, but even on an adjusted basis, the profit is just at around 710 odd crores. Uh, is that in line with your expectations? Yes, yes. So we were at okay. 697 to be specific. So it's slightly ahead with the adjustment. So okay. around about there, in line. Uh, all right. Uh, based on what they've reported, what is the assumption from the U.S. sales this time? considering that they had Revlimid uh, generic contributing and on the other hand they did have competition from say Albuterol. 
Yeah, so even we are hoping that Albutrol, uh, whatever the Bloomberg data showed us, they have lost some share there. So that's the reason we were expecting a slight weakness on the EBITDA margin, if you ask me. Uh, however, this is slightly below our estimates also. So we were at around 21.4, and I see that uh, U.S. might be a slightly weaker number than expectation, and India might have supported the overall uh, top line is what I'm, how I'm understanding the number as of now. Okay, that's uh, exactly what I just wanted to touch upon, that despite Revlimit Generic contributing this quarter, the margins have come in lower than what the street was anticipating. So based on the fact that, you know, Revlimit is going to not is going to taper off probably in the next couple of quarters in terms of contribution, what would your margin assumption be considering that there is lack of clarity when it comes to key drugs such as Adve Generic as well as Abrixon Generic? So in the best of quarters, in terms of contribution from drugs, they've reported 20% in terms of margins. Going forward, what would it look like? So we are building around a 22-23% going ahead uh, for a full year perspective. And I think they will deliver that because, see, given and said, generic revenue will be there for another two to three years. And the volume share adjustment have to give benefit uh, to the entire generic play. Right, not just a club, but everyone. So that will ensure your margin stability for the business. However, what remains uh, volatile is the quarterly numbers. And if we look at the overall U.S. generic business, also we are hearing the commentary. At least from all the peers who have reported so far, they are giving us a commentary that a single uh, high-digit, uh, mid to high-digit kind of a price erosion is visible. So that will give us some more stability for the overall margins going ahead for all the players uh, playing the U.S. generic market. So that's that's the thought process. And in terms of uh, overall EBITDA margin, as I told you, we do expect them to deliver a 22-23% EBITDA margin uh, for the coming two fiscals. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, Ekta, as well as Cinderella, for joining in and giving us those details. So first look at it. It appeared it was a big miss. Adjusted for those one-offs, it appears the numbers are pretty much in line. And as Cinderella says, she's expecting margins to improve a little bit from around this 21% odd mark to around the 22-23% odd range. Uh, Nimesh Joe joined.